Hi, I'm Sonia. My name is Blake. I use they, them pronouns, and I am here to help you with this question that I have right over here. So um, we want an equation of a rational function with these characteristics listed. So let's just call our function f of x, and let's let it equal to, and we're just it's going to put a big giant fraction bar here because it's a rational function. It's going to be a, um, a fraction where there's a polynomial on the top and a polynomial on the bottom. That's what a rational function is. So, um, so I'm just going to put this big fraction bar. So we're ready for that. All right. So, um, let's start with the easier characteristic, which is, the x-intercepts would have to be at negative four comma zero and two comma zero. That means that when you solve the, um, when you set this function equal to zero, you should get x equals two and x equals negative four. So how would we do that? Well, we'd have these factors up here, x minus two times x plus four. Because if we set this, top part, the numerator, equal to zero, we would get the answer is negative four, and we would get the answer positive two. So that's the first part. Um, uh, and the next part is uh, we need a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one and x equals three. Generally, when you have, um, Generally, what happens is that as we get closer and closer to somewhere where the denominator is zero, right, um, we will get a vertical asymptote, right? So if, if we're getting closer and closer to an x value where the denominator would be zero, then, uh, then where the x value is, where the denominator is actually zero, that would be a vertical asymptote. So we need to put in the factors x plus one and x minus three on the bottom because, uh, because that would mean that we'd get a vertical asymptote at negative one because if we plugged in negative one, we'd get zero over here and positive three. So if we plugged in positive three, we would get zero. So that, that would mean that there would be vertical asymptotes that x equals negative one and x equals three. Finally, we need a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative two. Now, notice here um, that the top and the bottom of what we have so far, because, uh, all right, we already did all these, <laughs> but the top and the bottom are both quadratic polynomials, right? And uh, and they both have um, a leading coefficient of one because we were to actually simplify what we have so far. This is actually equal to, if we foil this out, x squared uh, plus 4x minus 2x, which is 2x. And then uh, negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8. And then on the bottom, we get x squared minus 3x plus x, which is minus 2x. 1 times 3 is a uh, negative 3, excuse me, is negative 3. So look, the coefficient in front of our x squared is 1. Now, in order to get a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 2, uh, we have to do this. When the degree of the top is the same as the degree of the bottom, we have to make it so that the leading coefficient on the top um, divided by the leading coefficient on the bottom would give us negative two. So all we really have to do to do this is just multiply the top by negative two, right? Um, and we'd have it, right? Because the leading coefficient of our x squared is now negative two. And then if we divide that by the leading coefficient on the bottom, which is one, we get that the horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative two, because as our x tends towards infinity, our y is getting closer and closer to negative two. So, um, so our function would look something like this. Hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you so much.